If your garage door opener stops part way and sounds like this, stay tuned. This is a common repair and the replacement part runs about 20 bucks. Coming up right now here on Shop Tales and Lore. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Real quickly, before we get into today's topic, if you're a serious do-it-yourselfer or home workshop enthusiast looking for a variety of helpful content in one place, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified whenever we release a new video. And if we've helped you today, please take a moment to like, share, and comment below. It really helps out the channel, and your comments help others as well. Thanks again. When these drive screw operated garage door openers stop in mid travel and make that grinding or ratcheting sound, it's usually because the carriage assembly, sometimes called a trolley, has stopped engaging with the drive screw. If the motor is still operating and turning the screw, it's a pretty safe bet that a worn or broken carriage is the culprit. When everything is working as it should, a threaded collar in the carriage assembly meshes with the drive screw threads and travels the length of the screw when the motor is activated. The carriage is linked to the door itself by a control arm which operates the door as the carriage moves back and forth. The open and closed positions are established by limiter switches attached to the screw track that are triggered by the carriage as it moves along switching off the motor at the appropriate point. To replace the carriage Start by removing the cotter pin and clevis pin that connect the control arm with the carriage assembly. Make sure the carriage operating lever is in the down position which releases it, or what's left of it, from the drive screw. At this point, if you have enough room between the end of the track and the wall above your garage door, you should be able to slide the carriage out of the end of the track and remove it. In this case, we had to Remove the track from its mounting bracket and gently slide the track to one side in order to free the carriage. Be careful if you have to do this. Remember that the other end of the screw and track are attached to the motor and any excessive lateral force could damage one or more of these important components. Go slowly and use a light touch. Go no further than necessary to remove the carriage. A safer approach might be to remove the rear section of the track to swap out the carriage assembly, then replace the track. Just remember to minimize stress on everything by temporarily supporting the part of the track that's still attached to the motor. Here the track has been freed from its bracket and positioned slightly to one side. It took some finagling, but we were finally able to get enough clearance to slide the carriage off the end of the track and slide on the new one. Then it was just a matter of reattaching the control arm with the clevis and cotter pins and flipping the lever on the new carriage to the up position to engage the screw. Now let's see how we did. Let's compare the old and replacement parts to better understand why the opener broke down in the first place. Here's the new one. The teeth are sharp and uniform. When the carriage control lever is in the up position, the collar will firmly engage the drive screw. Now here's a look at the old one. Notice that while some teeth remain at each end of the collar, those in the middle section are almost completely worn away. This is by design. The collar is softer metal than the drive screw 
and is supposed to wear down over time. These badly worn threads were able to hang on in some places along the length of the screw, but when the carriage came to the first of these joints where the screw sections are coupled together, the carriage threads were just too worn to bridge the gap 